Hey, JC here at JC's Comics and More, your pop culture superstore at 6725 West Central Avenue. That is Toledo, Ohio, 4361-419-531-6097. Instagram, JC's Comics and More, www.jccomicsandmore.com. We've got uh, some Conans from that collection. I'm still kind of processing. I've been a little lazy on that. But uh, I had a guy come in this morning. Bought a uh, three, a five, and a nine off the wall, so I need to get these things processed because he's going to buy some of these also. We have got number four here. Of course, you got the great Barry Smith cover, fighting giant spiders. Him and uh, got Roy Thomas. Sal Basama did the uh, did the inks. This is from April of '71. Tower of the Elephant, uh, of course, by Robert E. Howard, and just incredible stuff. Like young Conan at. Uh, Conan just kicks, kicks butt wherever he goes. Take a quick look at this, and uh, there's another one of uh, Conan's uh, allies, I guess. Says he's a thief. You get different allies from time to time. Get the Marvel Mar Mighty Marvel Checklist. Uh, yeah, Amazing Spider-Man 95 is in there. Fantastic Four 109. Uh, Hulk 138. So, you can sell grit. You can see some of this stuff here that, that you see here. George Perez certainly was influenced by Barry Smith because George would use this when he would, uh, when he would uh, certainly do, uh, do some of his artwork. Of course, Conan fighting one of the first of many, many, many uh, spiders that Conan would always fight. Conan killed a lot of spiders. Of course, you got the Tower of the Elephant. All these great ads. Look at the letters pages. We've got Barry. Uh, Barry Smith from, from Canada. So, probably not the, obviously not the same Barry Smith. So, another Barry Smith. Um, so, we've got that one there. These things are not in the greatest of shape. But good, solid books to check out. Good issue number five. Another uh, Barry Smith, of course. Uh, Robert E. Howard. You got Frank Giacola then doing this one here. Um, let's take a look at some of these ads real quick before I have to get that phone. You got Spidey 96 with the, uh, the drug issues. Uh, Marwood did this for a while where they had uh, split the, the artwork up for whatever reason. I don't know why they did that. But uh, let's go back here to the letters pages, and and I'm going to pause this right now. You can see in the uh, letters pages, I don't really see uh, any names that uh, jump out, but you do see like a little map there. So they they do add in some extra stuff in uh, some of these early issues. And then we've got issue number six, which. I don't know, was five supposed to be? No. Issue number six, of course. You know, like I said, this is all early Barry, Barry Smith. And you got Sal coming back and inking uh, this issue. Uh, I'll take a just quick look here so we're not wasting a lot of time just looking at these things. Uh, nothing as far as the letters pages with this issue either. Uh, of course, you got these old Stanley soap boxes and the old bullpen bulletins, which are just great. And you can see this marble down here. They quickly added Conan to it because Conan was a bona fide hit right out of the gate. People just dug Conan. Um, this is you know some of Marvel at their at their absolute best. Here's Conan loses his helmet. Gets his helmet off. He always gets always gets the, the women. And then you see that there's an Arnold Schwarzenegger ad in this one here where he, he's got the woman also. Interesting. Uh, Arnold in a Conan comic. Was Conan's girlfriend for a little while, Jenna. She uh, 
was in the book for just a few issues. Uh, let's see if we can find out see if I have the issue where she uh, see she's on the cover of issue nine also. And we have issue seven. We got Dan Atkins and Sal Basama doing the uh, inks on those. Again, you got the great Marvel bullpen bulletins. You got this. Look at this. Uh, this house ad for Captain America 139, where he has to give up uh, either Captain America or being a being a cop. Stanley and John Romita. And we look at the letters pages again. Nothing that jumps out, but boy, these guys just they write these very passionate, very passionate the letters that they wrote to Marvel about Conan. Watch for new surprises from the House of Ideas as Mighty Marvel moves forward. We got Tothamon. It might have been his <clears throat> first appearance. I believe that's his first appearance in the Marvel Marvel Universe. Issue number eight, Keepers of the Crypt. I remember having this issue. This was one of my earliest issues I had myself that my dad bought for me. This is what, August of 71? August of 71. Barry Smith, you got Tom Sutton and, and uh, Tom Palmer. So the two Toms inked this. Uh, but this was, God, again, just great stuff. And he just, and Conan, he's killing. There's killing going on in this book. And this thing was approved by the Comics Code. You got a great uh, Gila monster coming after Conan. Spidey 99. Again, you have, for whatever reason, they decided to, rather than have art on one page and the ad, decided to split that up. And you can also buy, uh, buy all kinds of hit albums while you're in here. There's Jenna. She's once again in that issue there. Here's another map for the uh, Hyborian Age. And again, we look at the names. Nobody, nobody stands out. So we move to issue number nine. Unfortunately, that does have a uh, loose staple in the top cover there. With issue number nine, Garden of Fear. Got Jenna once again on the cover, and Salvasama with uh, Roy and and Barry. Look in the back. Again, surprisingly, nobody, uh, no names in there. And you can see the Conan, I believe the Conan image has changed a little bit since. Oh, my mistake. It's just the way it's colored. So it has not changed. You got the Red Wolf in there. Then pushing Red Wolf. Again, you've got Jenna. Conan always fighting incredible odds and there you go there's another Arnold Schwarzenegger ad him pushing the the Joe Wielder strong arm method for the hell bent for leather and lead bracelets that turn on your arm power on issue number 10 this is a double sized issue uh, two stories Wrath of the Bull God and there's a bonus Call the Conqueror so this might be one of the first Call the Conquerors I'll have to look that up again and looking at the names Again, I'm not seeing anything jumping out. There you got the Call of the Conqueror, probably with uh, Marie and John Severin. Uh, Roy Thomas, of course, and of course Robert E. Howard. Amazing Spider-Man 101. You've got an old reprint of the Black Knight. And more Conan. Fighting the Bull God. Jenna's decided to hook up with a new pretty young thing that uh, that uh, she's gotten her most all of her use out of Conan. Uh, there's no more opportunities using him, I guess. Then we have Conan number eleven. Conan's in. Uh, and the pokey there again, a double sized issue. 
And look, Fred Hembeck. There's a Fred Hembeck letter in here. Wow. Fred Hembeck. I'm going to have to let Fred know about that. He's fighting this giant ape. And he ends up killing the ape, of course. There you can, you can see what George started doing. And you see Jenna. Again, there is kind of racy a little bit that she drugged Conan. Again, we got an Arnold Schwarzenegger ad, so I'm going to make sure these things are indicated when I uh, when I uh, do the uh, when I uh, bagged up these comics. And you see, uh, there's. Uh, Icon, there's Jenna's new boy toy, and Conan makes fast work of him because there's other scores to pay. And he breaks in on her and he uh, gets rid of her. Now she's still, I guess she's still around, so I'm surprised they never brought her back at all. But get issue number 12, this has a Gil Kane cover on it. But uh, still Barry Smith on the inside, Dweller in the Dark. Got a Gil came back up. Look, there's uh there's Gil and there's Roy right there. Got a, a monster with a uh, uh, Hydra Dragon. You can buy yourself a Polaris nuclear sub. Tales of Hyborian Age. Let's check the letters pages on this here. Letters, there might not have been a letters page in this issue. Yeah, does not appear to be a letters page in this issue. But again, Conan fighting all kinds of hells in the Hyborian Age. Issue number 13, Web of the Spider God. Again, here we go. Conan's fighting spiders again. More spiders. Barry Smith, Sal, and the gang. He remembers, uh, thinking back to the, the spider that fought him before. And there you go. Ohm the Unspeakable. God. This just freaked me out as a kid. And we look at the, uh, look, Chrome. Chrome. Chrome wrote this, uh, issue. Or no, C.B. Davis wrote it. He goes after, he goes after the, uh, the spider. Look at that. That spider is just hellacious. He throws Conan like a ch child's ray doll. But finally, he kills uh, kills that demon. And he wants to tumble back into the hell if you want to, but you won't take me with you. And they've got issue number 14, The Coming of Elric. So you got Michael Moorcock along with uh, Robert E. Howard. And this is co-plotted by uh, Michael... Uh, uh, more pack as well. Let me get this phone. And we got, like I said, we got Alric in this one here. And again, nobody as far as names. There's Jenna, Spider-Man 106. So a two-parter. So uh, Alric was his was his. Uh, Partner for uh, for two issues, and surprisingly, nothing more came of Elric after this. So we've got that, and he's got Black Blade with him, and that's the second part of the the Elric comics. And also, you can see the the logo changed with uh, issue 12. It changed from that to the current or the logo that pretty much ran throughout the rest of the series. And yeah, take a quick look here. There's the end of that. And now we're going back for where he came from. And you got She Hulks here. See, there's the She Hulk. You got the Green Woman here. You got like the first appearance of Luke Cage. They're talking about Luke Cage there. So that actually predates Luke Cage number one. William Stout. There's a William Stout letter in here. So. Look at this here. We had a uh, we got a William Stout. We got a Fred Hembeck one. This is pretty amazing. And Arnold Schwarzenegger once again. That guy gets around. Are you all set there then? Okay. 
and we're going to pause this once again. Okay, we've got uh, Conan number 16. God, that was just in there. Just uh, dropped some good money buying some stuff. There's old Kotobuke uh, Black uh, Manta that he bought that's been in here way too long. He bought that. That was so cool. I'm glad that, was, that he's a big fan. I'm glad he got that. But you get the Frost Giant's uh, daughter, of course. That's uh, a classic by Robert E. Howard. And Barry uh, uh, inked this himself. So. Get the giants, kill him, my brother. She lured, tried to lure Conan. Again, classic. And then you've got, uh, got a backup there. Interesting there. I'm going to have to reread this before I, uh, before I make this up, talking about uh, Cole the Conqueror. This is, uh, you can say, this is an early what if right here. Since Conan is back in the age of, of men. I think this is Robert E. Howard? No, the wizard. That's who I am, called the Slayer. Len Carlson, that's what they call him. And look at this here. And there you got another map for the Hyborian Age. Just gotta hurry up here. We got Conan number 17, another Gil Kane cover. And uh, and Frank Bruner. Man, what a team up there. Gil Kane and Frank Bruner. Jeez, I wish I had that artwork. And you've got Gil Kane doing the art on this here. Gave Barry Smith a much needed issue off. And you got Gills, his his normal Vikings that are always just very uh, that braided hair and just oh just badass. You got the Ghost Rider. This is a predates Ghost Rider or uh, Marvel Spotlight number five. And then you got these <clears throat> strange dinosaur bird-like creatures at Conan, uh, and they both have to uh, have to kill. He's called Redbeard. He calls him Redbeard. Let's go through this again. Again, just great, great stuff. And where's the letters page? I might have passed up. There's the letters page. They always have special uh, announcements. There's a Shazam Award. That was an award that came out. But nobody... Well, actually, uh, this is J.M. Demonius. So again, you got you got more people that end up going on to be in uh, pros in these in these things. You got Gil Kane again. So two issues uh, given uh, given Barry some time off, and there's a recap of the last issue. Let's just cut right to the chase. Let's get get right to the end here and let's find the letters page here. And got Tom White, the editor of Amazing Fantastic, that he wrote in. He's telling that woman there. He's he's got a man's work to do. Coming in number nineteen, Barry Smith is back. Hawks from the sea. Let's check here. Black Hound Vengeance. You see Redbeard still is in this here in the story. But do they have a letters page in this issue or not? Okay. Let me check this real quick and then uh, go help the people that just came in. Looks like there's oh there's a letters page. Again, they're always always got stuff in here that they're commenting on. Okay, let me pause this. Okay, I got very, very busy there, so I had to stop that video and we splice these uh, two videos together. We'll have issue number 20, November 72. And again, uh, Barry Smith, got Dan Atkins 
Conan the Pirate. He's with Redbeard or Fafner. And he's lost an arm. Ah, man, I cut his arm off. Showing that war is hell. No matter when war is. Let's see. Got the epilogue. Okay. His friend has been, uh, I think, given, being given a Viking funeral. And let's see where the letters page is in this. Here we have another, another, uh, <laughs> uh, another map there. And talking about the Shazam 1971 awards. Uh, got that in there. Got the marble bullpen bulletins, of course. Stan Soapbox. Move on to the next one. At number 21, winner of the Comic Book Industries Old Academy Award for Best Comic Mag. You don't see that on Marvel Comics anymore. Again, Barry Smith cover, classic cover. Got uh, P. Craig Russo and Val Merrick doing uh, Sal Basama and Dan Atkins all doing inks on this. Shadow of the Vulture. And let's see here, do we have any names again that stand out? Ah, we've got one angry customer. Person saying, in my opinion, if Barry Smith doesn't draw Conan, you might as well cancel the mag. Uh, Gil Kane, New Adams, even Jack Kirby couldn't do the uh, Conan pro uh, property properly. Barry Smith's style was perfect Conan as he did justice to Robert E. Howard's stories. It's almost as they work together on the comic. One angry customer from Canada. There's the uh, house ads for Frankenstein. And again, just just great Barry Smith artwork. We'll have these priced up here in a little bit. Got Shadow of the, the Shadow of the Vulture. Coming to Conan, this reprints issue one. This uh, the dreaded deadline of doom took over. So if you miss Conan one, this is your chance to to get Conan one again. How's that? Okay. I'm gonna pause this and go check somebody out. Okay, I'm back. We we're talking about this. Uh, just what happened, oh, the camera decided to zoom in. Sorry about that. Okay, took a mind of its own. But I'm gonna have uh, probably this letter here uh, reprinted on the shop's Instagram so you can actually read this letter if you wish. So I'm gonna put that on the shop's Instagram. So, issue number 23 with the Gil Kane cover actually features Shadow of the Shadow of the Vulture. Adapted from the story by Robert E. Howard, creator of Conan. Conan, somebody that never took any any crap off of anyone. And the first appearance of Red Sonia, right there, there you go. You can see right away from the, from the, from the instant Conan, uh, held, uh, held a torch for, for Red Sonia. Always women, perhaps in your somebody's lives that she just uh, overtakes your life, and you just focus on that. You can't get her out of your mind, no matter what. 
no letters page in this issue, so we go to issue 24, Song of the Red Sonia. So again, we got more of, of Red Sonia. This was the first issue I had. I missed uh, issue 23 when I was a kid, but I had that issue there. And she's dancing and stuff, and it, uh, again, Conan has to <laughs> get into a bar fight. Imagine that, Conan gets into a bar fight. And she has, has a fun flirting with Conan and leading Conan on. Conan is not used to uh, taking no for an answer. Here he is. We discussed that. We're back from the table. So we talk. How about now? I said later and I meant it. He's not used to somebody like her. You know, there's talk of, you know, strong independent women these days or strong female characters. This right here is from what, 1973? March 73. There's a strong female character. They were there. They've always been there. You don't have to, not every one has to be a strong female character. Just like there's, not every male characters are strong. But there's, Sonya has opened up and has done something that she shouldn't have. And of course Conan has to save her. Because that's what he does, fights impossible odds. She was a thief. And gets on the horse and she just knocks him down. Okay, anyone in this issue here? Nobody in this issue here as far as uh, of note. I think that was Barry Smith's last issue. And then you brought in Big John Basama. So this issue... Number 26, John Basama took over with Ernie, Ernie June. <clears throat> Here we've got War of the Worlds, the house ad, and Romita, Romita Art. And let's see here. And again, it has some uh, explanation about the letters pages being what they are. But big John Basama certainly left his mark on Conan. Issue 28. Great Go Kane cover. Of course, Roy Thomas fighting the Golden Ape. Conan's always almost impossible odd, ad, odds. Women are not to be understood but loved. So Conan says no more. There you go. Put that on a t-shirt. And nobody of note in the letters page with that issue. Again, just such great job with some artwork. Here we got another Gil Kane cover. John loved doing Conan. He did not, not that he hated doing superhero comics, but he loved doing Conan. Gave him so much freedom. And here we have a uh, Bill Everett who passed away. There's a memorial for Bill Everett. And again, this is going to be reprinted and put onto the shop's uh, Instagram page. Look at all these letters here. At number 30, 31. Son of Satan, uh, Marvel Spotlight house ad. And again, not seeing any anybody with the the letters. We had a friend head back. We of course uh, and some of the other letters that we did have. William Stout. And we see Conan with his with his helmet again, so he got his helmet back. 
Got that back out of the pawn shop. Freely adapted by Flame Winds, Flame, Flame Winds by Norval Page. Okay, is there a letters page in this issue? Going on again, the fighting the monsters. And creatures that are just just too much for the average person. And here again, this letters page, I'm going to take a picture of that. Issue 33. It's a John Romita cover. I do believe. Maybe it might be, uh, actually I think it's uh, maybe Herb Trump and John Romita. Maybe that's who it is. Then you see Conan, the last issue, you saw all the, uh, the, the wounds from his battle. All these fighting beasts and prevailing. Okay, no letters page in this issue. That double page spread does not be appear to be a letters page in issue 33. It issues the number 34, Gil Kane cover. Got the Fumad, Friends of Old Marvel. Looks like this is the end of that storyline. Here we go. We've got World's Unknown Black Destroyer. Oh, I remember reading that. I think it was pretty cool. I wish I had a copy to read right now. And again, unfortunately, no one of uh, that went on to become anybody in the comics field in the letters pages. We've got number 37, great Neil Adams cover. And Neil Adams did the artwork on the inside as well. There you go, Neil Adams. Rare Neil Adams Conan issue. Give John Basama a little bit of a break. You got a Marvel value stamp. This is number eight, Captain America. Got number 38, Gil Kane cover, of course. I'll grab that phone in just a minute here. John Basama is back. Let's see, letters page. It's Marvel Value Stamp the Grey Gargoyle. And I don't see anyone again. And issue number 31. This unfortunately has like some sort of a almost a subscription crease. Again, Gil Kane and John Basema. This is the last of the Conans I have. Another great double page spread right there. And there we've got Hella, number 91. You've got House Ads for Giant Size, Master of Kung Fu. And once more, no names that just jump out at you. Conan number f f uh, 34, illustrated by Mandarin. Uh, Neil Adams was a subject, consider my correspondence. Uh, what do you call it when the letters pile letters pile up even higher than the usual mountain of mail, which nearly every Conan issue garters? Wow. Then we've got Giant Size Conan 1 and Giant Size Conan 2. New stories. Gil Kane did the art on these. And I'm sure it has a backup. Yep, it has a Barry Smith. Some Barry Smith backups. Uh, does not tell you what issue it is. But there's a House ad for Vampire Tales with Morbius and Lilith. There's another another map. Great Gil Kane artwork. Gil Kane just excelled at doing Conan too. 
And there you get Red Sonia. She's in her bikini now, her metal bikini. But you can see the face was redrawn by John Romita. So they weren't happy with uh, how Gil drew uh, Red Sonia's face. So John took it over. Uh, there's another Gil Kane uh, issue. And then again, you got Barry Smith. Backup uh, house ads for Fantastic Four Marvel Treasure Edition number two. Let's see here. Got another map. Conan 5 that was reprinted in. So just great, great stuff. We'll have these Conans, like I said, um, priced up and ready to go. Uh, you come in here tomorrow, they'll be ready to go then. And also got some other books that uh, will take care of uh, pricing up and everything. And check the uh, shop's Instagram, JC's Comics, and more for some pictures of uh, some uh, some illustrations from these books. Other than that, if you do if you do enjoy do enjoy these videos, if you do and do enjoy these videos. Please subscribe, and when you do subscribe, smash that bell for notifications. I thank you.